Hello everybody and welcome to Photoshop Lesson 2. We're going to cover primarily selections in this lesson. We're going to talk about what selections do, uh, the drawing selection tools, marquee tools, and the magic wand tool. And we'll uh, look a little bit more at layers in doing so. Let's look at a uh, review here. This picture of the car in Lesson 1, if you recall, we selected the headlight on this using the elliptical marquee tool. Let's explore that a little more. I've got the uh, rectangular marquee tool, and you notice when I click on it, there are hidden tools. One of those is the elliptical marquee tool. If I click on this canvas and I draw it, uh, it makes a an elliptical marquee tool. If I click outside of it, it goes away. If I want to keep it as a circle, I hold down the shift key and it will stay circular just like that. The rectangular marquee tool can make rectangles long or short. And again, if I hold down the shift key, it confines it to a perfect square. Uh, that's something you might want to consider and we will consider when we do it. Well, let's look exactly what selection tools do. When I draw a selection, it's what's inside that selection that I can edit. So let's take uh, the uh, paintbrush tool here. And uh, using the bracket key, I'm going to make the brush a little uh, larger. I'm going to draw over that. And you'll notice I don't get anything on the picture until I'm within the selection. Let's undo that. And you remember in the other one, we inversed the selection. We're going to do that again. And now everything outside of that is there. And only that which is in the selection, which is outside of my initial drawing, works. Having drawn that, I can also do what's called stroking it. Uh, let's go back. and inverse it for just that. And I'm going to uh, edit, stroke. I can choose the color. I will leave the color I got there. The size, I'm gonna make it 10 pixels and say, okay. And it actually puts color or tones, whatever I want onto that selection. I can add to or subtract from a selection by holding down the Alt key. If I hold down the Shift key, I get I will add to it. If I hold down the Alt key, you can see that there is a minus, and I'm going to do that. And it took out that bottom part, but it left a line there. I'm going to use that on a photograph momentarily. Some of the drawing tools, the lasso tool is a kind of a freehand selection tool. And if I hold down the shift key, I can add to that selection. If I hold down the alt key, I can subtract from it like this. Uh, if I use the preview button there, I can see what's in the selection, what's outside of it. If I click it again, it goes back to that click outside of the selection, it goes away. The polyagonal drawing tool lets me draw lines. And where I get that little zero up there, that's where I've got it done. I'm going to use that on a picture as well. In a little while. The magic lasso tool requires that I follow a uh, previous image. Um, and I will look at that as well. A lot of times you use the lasso tool to correct things that you've done. So let's, let's go to an image now. Let's say I've looked at this image and decided I don't like the blue uh, above that window. It just looks kind of dead to me. Well, I'm going to start out with the elliptical tool and I'm going to hold down the shift key to make it a circle. 
Again, if I hold down the space bar while drawing this, I can move my selection around, which is what I'm doing. If I put my drawing tool inside it, I can use the directional keys on the keyboard. Now, I'm going to do like I did in the other one. I'm going to select the rectangular marquee tool and hold down the Alt key to subtract from the selection and, and draw that. Make sure I've done it. Hold down the space bar just like that. And there's my uh, selection. I put that inside of it. I can shift that down just like that. Now, before I do anything, I'm going to want to make some changes here. I'm going to go to Select modify and it's going to modify this selection i want to feather that i'm going to do it by one pixel that makes it a soft edge i'm going to do it again i'm going to expand it by one pixel just to make sure i've got everything covered i want and look at my preview and see that that's the only area now where i can work so i'm going to use Another thing we learned before, brightness and contrast. I'm going to up the brightness on that and up the contrast on it a bit. Just like that. Say OK. If I click outside of that, the selection goes away and you can see what I've done. Let's look at what it looked like before. I got a better idea that's not going to work as well <clears throat> there's what it looked like to start with and there's what it looks like now and i've only affected that area of the picture that's one reason you might want to use that and that's just using the marquee tools uh, another reason to use marquee tools i'll show you in this particular image I'll again use the, make sure I've got one layer here, my rectangular marquee tool, and I'm going to draw that around the uh, words here, snowball. Uh, then I'm going to press, you're not going to be able to see it, the delete key on my keyboard. i got to make sure this has only one layer. And it asks me if I want to do a fill with content aware. That means it'll look at things around that and take it away. I'll say, okay and bingo it's gone the word snowball is gone that's what i wanted i can also if i want to with that elliptical marquee tool holding down the shift key select this ball just like that like we did with the headlight and like I did for the opening image that you saw. Um, that's something that I used quite a bit in this particular image. And if we look at that, you can see that the uh, top ball isn't really part of the image. And the one in the lower left, that's also been added. I did that, and I also made it slightly transparent so you can see what's underneath it. That's something we'll get to when we look at layers. Lots of reasons to use selections, and those are primarily things where we're using the marquee tools. I want to now go into the magic wand. Uh, like I said, that's kind of a magical uh, tool. and. What it does is it uh, selects areas of a color in an image that are similar. Now, normally the magic wand tool is under the quick selection tool, but I've already brought it to the top. Uh, the tolerance in the options bar is set at 25, which for this yellow is pretty good. I'm going to put the tool over the yellow and click, and you can see that it's selected the entire amount. There, there it is. I will go select, deselect. If we try that on the red, it's not as successful. I can go through there and add to that selection, but all of this garbage you see here means that that's not selected. I'll 
deselect that. If I up the tolerance now to 50, when I click on it, ah, there we go. It selected all of the red in there. And if I uh, try it on the blue, let's go deselect. Pretty much covers that. The green, everything there. That's very important to know that that tolerance gives you a better way to go now. Ah, let's put this aside and let's see how it works. If your art director says, I want that duck selected, you might be tempted to use the drawing tools we're going to look at in a while. But magic wand tool is really what you want to use. And you don't want to try it on the duck because there's lots of different colors and things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the white area behind the duck. If we check that, there you go. The duck is outside of the selection. I want the duck in the selection. Then I just go to select inverse like we did with that car. And there you go. Very nicely done, very easily done. A great way to uh, uh, make a selection when you need to. And then I can do things with that duck. I can make it black and white. I can drag it to another image. I want to show you something that you can do with this particular image. And what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to go into layers. And there's only one layer. And I'm going to take that layer and drag it to this icon at the bottom that says create a new layer. And then I'm going to uh, select the background in a minute. But for now, I'm going to use that magic wand to select this gray that this lady's holding. I'm going to modify that like I did before. Expand it by a pixel. Feather it by a pixel like that. And now I'm going to do something we haven't done. I'm going to go up to Edit and Cut. And if we turn off the background layer, you can see that there's a hole in there. I'm going to select the background layer now because I'm going to put another image behind that. I'll use the Move tool, and I'm going to drag this over here and drag it down just like that. I'm going to go to transform here and I'm going to make that fit the image like that. Bum, bada, bum. I'll click OK and there we go. It looks like she's holding that picture of a bird done by a, a very talented student that I had in the past. But anyway, we use the selection tool to cut a hole in that. Let's look at some of the other tools that we've got for selections. Something like this, it's going to be very difficult to use the magic wand tool, but that polyagonal tool seems to be a great idea. We can click every time we want to make a bend in the corner like this go all the way down double click when you want to finish um, and if we look at it there's our selection now you might have noticed that there's a little bit up here that we don't want. It's it's out of that. So let's use that same tool and use the uh, um, Alt key. And that takes it out just like that. Great way to uh, take things that are geometric and draw around them. I use that very tool in this situation with this picture. A lot of times when you take a photograph, you're going to find that the outside 
is exposed nicely, but the inside is way too dark. You think, well, 